first off, good morning. I'll, uh, I'll give you some background on my, my Buick Krebs before I start. So I was the uh, uh, lead chassis engineer back on the old Buick uh, Rendezvous, and then I took over after launch as the program engineering manager on Rendezvous. Met several of you uh, on the launch of the Enclave. I was the program engineering manager all the way through the development and launch of the Enclave, and now uh, chief engineer in Regal. So I've been in the, in the Buick family for quite some time. So what I'm going to do is uh, lead you through what's new for the 2014 Regal, the athlete of the, uh, the Buick family. I'm going, to, I'm going to do it a little different though. I'm going to talk first about the Regal, and then uh, go through what's unique about the Regal GS. I'm going to call it the GS just to save some words. Um, I'm going to go pretty quickly. And then uh, later throughout the day, if you have any questions, let me know. Nancy Huber, our program engineering manager, is here. Nancy's been on the program longer than I and can answer all your questions if, if I cannot. And we've got some technical experts from Powertrain, from our ride handling area, and then from IntelliLink. So we'll get all your uh, questions answered. So from an exterior perspective, uh, styling is, is really the number one reason for, for purchase uh, for Regal. It's been that way for a number of years. So. We made some enhancements, but they're really an evolution. We didn't want to screw a good thing up. So the front end, uh, the focus is trying to make it look a little bit more athletic, a little wider, a little closer to the ground. So new fascia, new waterfall grill, uh, new lamps, uh, halogen on the, on the Regal, and then you can option up to a HID with LED signature lighting. It's uh, got the cue now of the Buick family. From a rear perspective, a new deck lid with an integrated spoiler. When I say integrated, I mean stamped in, so the spoiler stamped in. New rear fascia. And the fascias are unique between front and rear, unique between Regal and GS. Uh, new LED lamps, and then uh, the cross car chrome accent that ties the two lamps together and tries to accentuate the wider, lower to the ground stance. Powertrain is a big story for us for 2014. A new uh, standard powertrain is the 2 liter turbo. It's different than the 2 liter turbo that we had in 2013. It provides 259 horsepower, 295 foot pounds of torque, 2130 from a fuel economy perspective on the front wheel drive. And that alone represents a pretty significant improvement from the 2013 2 liter turbo. That's 39 additional horsepower and three additional city mile per gallon. Um, and then we have all wheel drive, and I'll talk about all wheel drive in a second here. All together, uh, the, the story I think is, is the available torque. Between 1700 and 5500 RPM, 90% of the torque is available. So there's a really, really wide torque band that's been optimized uh, for, for Regal. We also offer still the e assist uh, powertrain. It's unchanged from 2013, provides 25 city, 36 highway for the more fuel efficient uh, focus customer in both of those. Engines are available with the six-speed automatic transmission. From a chassis perspective on Regal, the uh, front suspension is a McPherson strut. On all-wheel drive, we use our, our hyper strut, our high-performance strut, which uh, improves camber control and reduces torque steer. From a rear suspension perspective, a four-link on the front-wheel drive, and the all-wheel drive gets an H-arm. The H-arm helps us package the, uh, the all-wheel drive system in the rear. Four-wheel disc. The E-Assist gets 17-inch tires and wheels, the Turbo Regal gets 18s, and we happen to have, for appearance reasons, some, some new wheels uh, in 2014 for Regal. So, new all-wheel drive. It's a Haldex system. It's completely automatic, on-demand, electronic limited slip rear, uh, which improves both wet traction, as you'd, uh, as you'd expect, but also enhances stability and cornering capability by transferring torque to the rear wheels when necessary. It's a pretty sophisticated system as, as most of them out there are right now. It takes different inputs, uh, uh, steering angle, wheel speed, wheel slip, and then optimizes uh, torque and, and traction to uh, keep the vehicle going in the intended direction. From an inter interior perspective, uh, I'll start at the center stack of the vehicle and then I'll work out more to the left. What's new is uh, we really try to simplify uh, the customer experience really try to simplify the, the center stack. So there's a new 8-inch touchscreen, which is home to next-gen uh, Buick IntelliLink. And then below that is a simplified radio control setup. I, I think we went from 17 knobs and, and buttons to 7, so trying to make it more intuitive, easier to use, reach over, there's the volume button. Uh, below that is uh, a dual-zone climate control system, which is capacitive controls. And then as we move to the left, the cluster in the Regal is, is brand new. It's got a 4.2 inch color screen that interacts with IntelliLink. 
and then a new steering wheel uh, to house the controls for IntelliLink um, and, and put it all at the, the driver's uh, easy uh, use. So if, uh, if Regal is the athlete in the family, we really look at the GS as you know, the all-star quarterback. It's, it's really the, the most sporty expression of, of Buick. And from an exterior perspective, again, uh, the number one reason for purchase is styling. So what we've done is, is more enhancement, um, more evolution, uh, new front fascia, new waterfall grill, still have the vertical air inlets, uh, HIDs with the uh, LED daytime running lamps are standard. And then in the rear, uh, same deck lid, we've added an additional spoiler on the rear. The, the rear fascia is all brand new and unique, integrated uh, exhaust outlets. It uses the same LED tail lamps. That bright chrome strip that uh, connects them is a different finish, but essentially the same appearance, trying to make the vehicle appear a little bit wider and a little lower. And then the same uh, rocker panel extensions as past uh, model GS. From a powertrain perspective, the only engine available in the GS is that turbo. What's different, to try to highlight here, is the, uh, the max torque range that goes from 3,000 to 4,000, which is in the Regal, to 2,500 to 4,000, so a wider max torque range. And then also um, on the GS, on the front wheel drive only, you get a six speed manual. The question is asked, well, why not offer that manual with all wheel drive? And simply put, there just aren't enough takers for that, so there's no technical limitation. If the demand were there, we could put all, uh, manual with the all wheel drive, but just can't substantiate it for the number of uh, hand raisers right now. <coughs> from a chassis perspective, here's where it gets fun. From a, from a GS perspective, hyper strut standard uh, on the rear suspension, the four link on the front wheel drive, again the H arm on the all wheel drive, and then we use continuous damping control to, to tie those together so it seamlessly and continuously is optimizing the damper configuration to keep the vehicle level flat and going in uh, the intended direction. Four wheel disc brakes, however we do about, about an inch larger front disc on the GS to house the, uh, the Brembo front calipers and the 19 inch tires and wheels are standard and you can option up to uh, what's on this vehicle, the 20 inch summer only performance rated tire. So along with uh, GS, along with the uh, continuous stamping control is a system we call interactive drive control. It's unique to GS, there are three modes. It varies, uh, it's really a pretty ingenious, I think, uh, integration of suspension, steering, transmission, and all the drive. I'll pull this chart up so we can talk to this for a second. So touring mode is, is when you get in and don't do anything. Um, if you were to, to touch the sport button, which is at the top of the center stack, it's off on the passenger side, there's a sport button. It'll increase the, uh, the damping characteristics a bit, make the, the vehicle a bit firmer, you'll, you'll notice less body roll. And then if you're in an all-wheel drive model, you'll notice some additional torque transfer to the rear in cornering uh, conditions. So on dry road, you'll get more torque transfer to the rear. Uh, on GS, uh, and this is really the, the fun driving mode, the GS button is at the top of that center stack closest to the driver. It adds an additional uh, tweak to the, to the damping, it'll make it even stiffer. In fact, it can be harsh on rough roads, so uh, caution you on that. It increases steering efforts, does the same thing with the all-wheel drive. It doesn't change the shift points in the transmission, but it gets you through them more, more quickly, more precisely. And then it has a, a, an algorithm we call a PAL performance algorithm lift foot. And what that is, is if you're hard into the throttle, say you're uh, entering the highway on the entrance ramp, and in the right lane the guy you're coming up on uh, slows down, as you lift your foot off the throttle, you won't get a gear change. You'll stay in that gear to give you a chance to maneuver out of that so you don't lose gear, then you have to get back in gear when you jump back on the throttle. So it holds your current gear state while you're uh, maneuvering out of that situation. So it really makes it fun to drive. So all-wheel drive on GS is the same system, except with interactive drive control, we change the characteristics a bit when you're in GS mode. It really makes it a, a fun to drive system. From an interior perspective, focusing on what's new and unique to GS, uh, NAV is standard. Uh, for 2014, the interior is just all black. Uh, in, in past years, we had kind of a black uh, uh, gray configuration, so the interior is, is, is absolutely all black for 14. Uh, leather sport seats with good bolster support to keep you firmly planted. And then uh, racing inspired uh, steering wheel flat on the bottom, nice good cross section of the wheel that feels good in your hands while you're driving in GS mode and then metal support pedals, so really focused on the driving experience. And then continuing on, um, so we talked about the eight inch color display in the center stack, 
the GS has a four point, or the, the Regal has a 4.2 inch display, the GS gets a big 8 inch display, so two 8 inch color screens in the GS. It's customizable and you can take information back and forth uh, and, and project what you want. There's actually two driving modes or display modes, sport and touring. We have them all set on, uh, on sport because I think it looks a bit cooler. It's got the analog the speedometer. If you go into touring, there's a, a digital speedometer that stays at the top at all time. If you're interested, we can switch it over, show you how to switch it this afternoon. And all this put together, we think, really creates a, a driver-centric uh, orientation. That's an orientation. That knows our vision. Right? So all-wheel drive, cons uh, continuous damping control, interactive drive control, a nice comfortable steering wheel, bolster, uh, seat bolster support to keep it firmly planted. And then Buick and Telelink easily controllable. So everything is focused on the driver and the driving experience in GS. Now, from a safety and packaging perspective, Roger talked a little about it, so I'm going to fly through it. We do have rear camera standard. Um, there are a couple safety packages. One is uh, Driver Confidence One. It's got all the, the content that Roger talked about: side blinds on lane change alert, and lane departure warning, forward collision alert, rear cross traffic alert. Um, a really useful everyday safety technology that's, that comes together in one package. And then if the customer chooses that, they can then option up if they're interested in full speed range, adaptive cruise control. It is full speed range, it will take you to zero um, in the right conditions. And that comes with collision, uh, collision mitigation braking. So I think you add that together. Um, you know, I'm comfortable having a discussion against any of our competitors in this segment with an all-wheel drive GS with that safety package. We've got the features and, and drivability to, to really be in a conversation with any of the top competitors in the segment. Now, from a uh, this is on eye chart. There are uh, copies, if not at your table, back on the on the back table. So what we're trying to communicate here is we've simplified the uh, the ordering experience for the customer and for the dealer uh, for both Regal and GS. The Regal really only comes in three flavors: the, the leather package, which is the standard content. You can then option up to the premium one, which adds some content to that. If you go to premium two, you get even an additional package. And then as an aside, the uh, e-assist this year is available only with premium one, which is the high volume package. So we've kept uh, e-assist focused on, on just one package that we think is a high volume package to make it easier to order. And then the GS comes with, with all that content. And then uh, both premium two and GS, you can option up to the, the uh, confidence one and confidence two package. So, Really cut down on, on build complexity. So engineering and manufacturing, boy, we, re we really love it. It helps us focus on quality. And we were number three in the JD Power uh, initial quality survey, and, and things like this help us uh, focus on improving that, to, you know, to get to the to the top of that segment. So a much uh, reduced build complexity, much simpler ordering experience for the customer and for the dealer when they're going to order vehicles to keep on the lot. It really helps them out. on safety. So this applies to the whole portfolio. So think about it in terms of active safety and passive safety. So from a passive standpoint, each model that's been tested of the, and the Buick lineup has an IIHS top safety pick. Uh, we had the industry first front center airbag is standard on the Enclave and then uh, the safety and security of OnStar on every vehicle. Now turn your attention to, act, to active safety. So if you think about the whole lineup, on every Buick in 2014, every vehicle will have available, uh, again, think of it in your mind, forward, uh, front, side, back. So you've got forward collision <coughs> alert available on every Buick, lane departure warning and side blind zone alert, and then a rear vision crank camera and rear cross traffic alert available on every vehicle. So a commitment to safety of Buick. And then if you want to think about customer focus or, or put it in your mind as kind of peace of mind, um, we have experienced Buick protection in, in every model. So again, giving people a reason to try Buick. We want to bring them into the family because we're so confident in that, uh, in our products that we've bring, been bringing out now. We know once the people experience it, that we can keep them in the Buick family. One way to do that is to, again, offer them that peace of mind. Two years and 24,000 miles of scheduled maintenance on every Buick. Great warranty protection that you can see up there. Uh, courtesy transportation, roadside assistance, six months of OnStar, that five years of OnStar remote link mobile app service, and then all of that is kind of, if you look at some third party endorsement of that strategy, uh, Kelly Blue Book, it was a best, best value luxury brand, um, Auto Pacific Vehicle Satisfaction Award, and Vincentric 
best value in America award. And I would say about the Auto, Auto Pacific, uh, it's the best, um, the highest rated popular brand in the market. Um, it's, it's, if you're not familiar with it, it's a survey of 50 or 52 vehicle attributes and they survey about 52,000 people. So a pretty robust survey and then again it had Buick as the top popular brand which told us, again, was kind of validation that we're on the right track. So then I just wanted to make one last comment. Uh, you've seen in the press, you've heard some chatter about the idea of uh, Opal and Buick working closer together. That is absolutely true. And what we're doing there is just forming a more, a tighter relationship. Now we've been doing that already, as evidenced by an Opal Mocha and a Buick Encore, or an Insignia and a Regal, or a Verano, Blastra, Buick Excella, uh, GT and XT in China. So we've already been doing that, but this is really kind of more formalizing the relationship and putting a more focused emphasis on it to say that let's work together, let's make sure we work together over time early in the process to, with the strength of both brands, make both brands better. It offers more opportunity going forward. It'll expand our horizons, if you will. It will provide scope and scale such that some things that we might not have been able to do on our own, we can now do on our own. And it provides the opportunity for all those Buick attributes to make Opal better and the things that Opal's great at to make Buick better. And I think together we become, uh, both brains working together become better individually as well. So that's really what you're hearing when you hear about this. Opal and Buick working closer together, Buick North America, Buick China and Opal. So that's what that's all about. So